resources available to undertake trade negotiations at any given time. So countries are going to prioritize negotiating trade with their most important trade partners. Um, and the EU as a whole is a much bigger market than the UK. So uh, from the US perspective, it's much more important for the US to reach a free trade deal with the EU, as it's currently trying to do in the TTIP negotiations, uh, than to reach a much smaller deal with the, the UK. So I think it's, it's reasonable to expect that uh, Britain would indeed go to the back of the queue uh, for a free trade deal with the US. Trading under World Trade Organization rules would leave the UK worse off than we currently are as a member of the EU. The reason for that is that um, if we were trading under World Trade Organization rules, we would face what are called the most favored nation tariffs when we trade with other countries. Okay, And in particular, we'd face these tariffs on our trade, uh, on our exports to the EU, which would mean it would be harder to trade with the EU. Free trade areas like the EU make countries better off. And that's what we'd be losing out on if we were to leave the EU. So Patrick Minfram's analysis uses a model of the global economy that is very different from the models used by, say, in, say, the work I've done with colleagues at the LSE or used by the Bank of England or OECD or the, the IMF. And what this gives is a very unusual view of trade, which is totally inconsistent with the data. One thing kind of you learn in the first time you take a trade economics course is that trade flows between countries follow what is called a gravity equation, which is to say you get more trade between countries that are closer together and that are larger. Now, Patrick Minford's model is not consistent with that gravity equation, so it's really not well grounded in what we know empirically about trade flows. Um, and for these reasons, it leads to some very different predictions from other models, and I think predictions which I would consider much less reliable, because it's, you know, because he doesn't ground his work in in empirical data and in what we know about how trade actually happens. Um, when we kind of look at what the effects of immigration have been on UK wages, by, for example, looking at uh, how changes in wages are related to where there are kind of a large proportion of immigrants living, it's clear that there's, there's really no relationship there. So it's really hard to find any evidence that immigration has had a negative effect on UK wages. So I think that's a, that's a bit of a, a myth, right? There are many concerns people have about immigration, but it would be wrong to think that immigration has put downward pressure on, on UK wages. Think about your vote kind of along two dimensions. One is the economic effects. Now, I think there's a, a clear case that the overwhelming majority of economists agree that the UK will be worse off outside the EU. So for students thinking forward about you know, when they get a job, how much that job will pay, they can expect to be worse off if we vote for, for Brexit. But on the other hand, you know, clearly it's not just about economics, it's about you know, politics and how we view the UK's place in the world. And there, I think it's really a question of, do you uh, view the UK as being kind of a country that cooperates and works together with other countries and that participates in international institutions. I mean, do you think that the way we can solve the big global problems is by uh, working together with other countries and cooperating? Or do you think the UK is better off cutting itself off from the rest of Europe and going it alone? Right? And I think you know, that's going to depend on your own values and political beliefs, but that's the key trade-off we face in this round. 